All right, y'all, this is the Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 10, and this is the final part to the to the um reunion. So we picked up where we left off from last week with, you know, NeNe digging in Kim's motherfucking ass and, you know, NeNe getting about her seat and going all like this in Kim's face or whatever and sitting up here saying how, you know, Kim always wanted to sit up here and talk shit with Sheree or whatever, but now uh she don't want to sit up here and say what all that she said to um people's faces and shit like that. And it just, it did take me back to a uh, season, uh, I think it was season one's uh, reunion where um, NeNe had got up in Kim's face or whatever. And, um, you know, Lisa Wu had to um, hold NeNe back and everything and sit on her lap to, you know, make sure NeNe don't get up again or whatever. It was like that whole situation all over again. Only thing that's different is that, you know, Candy was trying to kind of, you know, get NeNe to sit back down. Now, she wasn't going above and beyond to get NeNe to sit back down like how Lisa Wu was. But, you know, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of like... Uh, a repeat of that situation all over again. Uh, all over again. So, you know, in regards to the whole um, handicap parking situation, um, Kim says that it was a funny joke or whatever that, you know, that she was in um, handicap parking and everything. Yeah, okay. And, um... Kim is like, you know, Nene shouldn't be taking handicap um parking from handicapped people or whatever. And Nene once again has to explain that, you know, Greg does have like a handicap sticker and then she has somebody handicapped with her and um as well and everything. And you know, um Nene is like uh She's like, is you handicapped with all them diseases that you got or whatever? You know, where's your scooter at? <laughs> I was cracking up. I said, yeah, get in her ass, Nene, okay? And so, uh, Andy, he decides to move on because they're not getting anywhere in the conversation. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, um, so we move on to Sheree and Jailbird Tyrone's storyline. Um... Sheree pretty much is saying that if his appeal doesn't come through, that she's going to move on. And I'm just like, oh, really? Because the way you were acting throughout the season, you was acting like you was just head over he head over heels and so in love and acting as if you was going to wait for him. Now you're sitting up here saying that if the appeal doesn't come, that you will move on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And so um, she's like, and you know, even now I go on dates or whatever, this, that, and the third. And, you know, um, even though, yes, I do love of Tyrone and everything you know I still got to live my life at the end of the day or whatever and Portia is like you know you're dealing with somebody who isn't physically able to um give you the love that you deserve and that people around you feel like it, if people that are around you feel like that you deserve and you know um Sheree is like, well, people date people for different reasons. Some people date married men or whatever, and they are not always available to you either, but it is what it is. And it was so funny when they panned the camera on Kim when it came to the whole married uh, uh, men uh, comment or whatever. I said, uh, Sheree, you know uh, your friend uh, was dating the married man back in the day. <laughs> like, you don't remember that? You know what I'm saying? So um, and why are you sitting up here trying to make this point and try to make justifications for you to be almost 50 years old and, and, and starting off a relationship like this with somebody that's in jail? You know what I'm saying? And Andy, he's like, you know, I can hear NeNe now saying close your legs to married men. And Kim is like, you know, well, NeNe was with Greg while he was married. And NeNe is like, uh, bitch, I met Greg in 96. He wasn't married to or with anybody when he got with me okay um and so um nene is like you always sitting up here trying to come for me being a stripper or whatever but how about you uh um dancing in oasis uh dressed as a nurse or whatever i said so that's where kim got her nurse certif um certification from was the damn strip club nene <laughs> Because y'all remember uh, when Phaedra was on the show and many seasons ago uh, where uh, Phaedra was questioning whether uh, Kim was really a registered nurse or not. <laughs> I was cracking up. I said, oh, that's where uh, Kim got her um, her nursing, uh, her nursing um, um, license at. It was the strip club. So anyway, as you know, um, Andy is asking... Um, Kim does, you know, is Big Papa still married or whatever? And, and Kim's like, really, Andy? Like, you know, I don't know. I've been with Croy for over seven years now. And Nene is like, you know, and Nene is like, well, I've been with Greg for um 20 plus years. Uh, come on now, you know, mocking Kim and shit. And so, um, 
they asked Nene why she got so offensive about, you know, um, when being asked about Tyrone and everything. And Nene just felt like that she was over it, you know, being constantly asked about the shit. That's why she got in touch with Sheree personally, because, you know, she felt as though uh, people was trying to turn this plot line into some, in, um, turn this plot line into a place that it didn't need to go to. So, you know, Andy brings up the whole Barcelona situation where, um, Candy had asked Nene about Tyrone, and it seemed like Nene kind of cinched on herself by saying, you know, I never um, dated Tyrone or whatever when nobody uh, brought up the fact of her uh, dating Tyrone or not. And um, Nene, once again, she just says that she was irritated or whatever, this, day and the third. And, you know, um, I kind of think I believe Nene at this point. I think that I don't think that her and Tyrone had anything going on. Um, but anyway, so, you know... Um, They get they was talking about uh what Nene had said about Tyrone on um her blog spot or whatever and how you know she feels as though he's perfect for Sheree and everything and you know um you know so what are you trying to say about Sheree if you think all these things are him and um Nene is like I just said that based off what I saw of him or whatever and Sheree is like, well, what you mean? Because, you know, on Twitter, you claim you sucked his dick or whatever. And Nene said it sarcastically because, you know, um, once again, she's tired of everybody asking her about it or whatever, this, that, and the third. And so, you know, Andy is like, well, I actually spoke to uh, Tyrone earlier. And, you know, he said pretty much that you were stalking him and everything. And Nene is like, oh, well, we'll wait till Lyron gets out of jail to have a conversation with him, <laughs> you know. And then um, we have, you know, Kim versus Kenya. You know, how their beef... uh started with the whole uh basement situation at Sheree's house last year you know what I'm saying and um Kenya she explains that you know her and Sheree uh you know they throw light shade at each other or they was throwing light shade at each other um in regards to each other's houses or whatever and then Kim jumped into the mix coming at me and it's like bitch I don't even know you so why are you even talking to me right now and Kim is like you know um She's like, listen, I didn't know what was going on with her and Sheree, but I felt as though Sheree was hosting this party and you were being an asshole. You know what I mean? And, um, they, you know, they start going back and forth or whatever. And Kenya's like, you know what, Andy, uh, let me move to the other, um, side of the couch or whatever. She goes, um, to sit on the couch where, um, Nene, Sheree, and, um, Candy is at or whatever. She's like, you know, let me go on this couch or whatever so we can see each other as I'm talking to you and not this bitch, okay? So, you know, uh... Somebody, you know, one of the viewers was like, you know, Sheree, you're the shadiest of them all because one minute you say that you're happy, you know, you tell you tell Kenya that you're happy for her and everything, and then the next minute you're joking with Kim about her old ass eggs or whatever. And you know, um, Kenya is like, you know, it doesn't matter how old I am, and you know, you laughed at it, you know, you laughed at it, laughed at it, Lord, getting tongue tied, you laughed at it. When you said that you were happy for me and everything, this, that, and the third. And so, one of the viewers had asked Kim, why did you instigate the fight with Kenya and then gets mad when, and get mad when she claps back at you? You know what I'm saying? Kim um, feels like their husband, husbands and kids are off limits and everything. And, you know, um, she's still talking about the situation that happened at Sheree's house or whatever. And Kim is like, I mean, not Kim. Kenya is like, girl, we talking about what happened at Nene's party when you came for me for no reason. I didn't even say shit to you. And Cynthia, she co-signs on Kenya's behalf. Like, yeah, she didn't say nothing to you. She wasn't even concerned about you. And you just kept on throwing shade. You know what I mean? And, um, they asked, um, they ask Kenya, was she jealous of Kim or whatever? And Kenya is like, um, don't nobody want them damn baby kids because they was asking her, was she jealous because Kim had kids and she did it. And Kenya was like, don't nobody want them um damn baby kids that she got running around the house, the fucking rugrats and shit. <laughs> so anyways, you know, um, 
they start going back and forth again or whatever. And, you know, Kenya is like, you know, my husband got bigger balls um, than um, your husband ever will. And Kim is like, uh, no, my husband has bigger balls than your um, husband ever will. And Kim, I mean, and, um, not Kim, Kenya, she's like, oh, well, I guess you would know since, you know, uh, you do a lot of dick sucking. <laughs> So anyways, you know, Kenya, she's like, um, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not Ke um, Kenya. One of the viewers had asked, Kim, you know, if you think Kenya is so evil, why do you even care about her marriage? You know what I'm saying? And um, Kim is like, but Kenya's, you know, Kim is like, because Kenya's marriage is a whole lot. But why does that matter to you, though? You married, you've been with Croy for almost 10 years now. Why does it matter to you about what Kenya got going on, considering that you don't fucking like her? You know what I'm saying? And um, Kenya is like, you know, uh, you was trying to pimp your daughter out to the world or whatever. And um, your husband turned you from hoe into a housewife. You know what I mean? And um, Kim starts going in about her about her own show about that tired ass party for the party that don't nobody give a fuck about and i don't even understand how that shit is still on and she's saying you know uh we're seven seasons in or whatever this then the third so uh um you know obviously that means something or something like that she was saying and nini is like uh so what's the reason huh What's the reason um that you got your own spinoff? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, Nene, because Aquara reminds one of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, Nene is like, I mean, you said that like you was some motherfucking big shot, like you big pimping around this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know what does this have to do with this show? Okay? And um, Nene is like, you don't do shit but party for the party or whatever. And Kim claims that she has, I guess, like a skincare line or whatever. And that it's worth $15 million and everything. And Kim is like, bitch, please. You better off putting anesthesia in the bottle for uh, bitches who get lips inje uh, lip injections like your motherfucking ass. Okay? <laughs> you know? And so, um, then um, Portia, they asked Portia, um... Why did she call Kim's daughter a hoe to her face or whatever? And why didn't Kim check her? And Kim was like, because I didn't hear her and everything. And I ain't going to lie. When that episode came on, I guess I wasn't paying attention because when some of the other YouTubers were saying that, you know, uh, Portia had said, yeah, and your whole daughter or whatever. Uh, I was like, wait a minute, Portia said that? So I had to go back and look. And I was like, oh, shit, she did say that. And Kim ain't say a motherfucking thing. They like, you know, you so quick to check Kenya and everything, but you ain't check Portia. And Kim was like that she didn't hear Portia and everything. And Portia's like, listen, I didn't mean it like that or whatever. And I, I think I do believe Portia, you know, uh, just, you know, talking and not realizing what she's saying. And, um, you know, then that brown liquor will do it for you sometimes. So, yeah, you know, I believe um, Portia on that. So, you know, um, they asked Kim, you know, you say that husband and kids are off limits. So why talk about, you know, Kenya's husband and everything? Kim is like that she ain't talk about Kenya's husband. And Kenya's like, you said that he was fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're talking about my marriage or whatever, but gets, get, gets mad when somebody talks about yours and everything. You know what I'm saying? And um, Portia's like, listen, she still had it out for you or whatever. So when she saw you, she had to get you and everything. And Kenya, she's like, well, why the fuck did she just didn't, why, why didn't she just say that then? You know what I'm saying? She's saying all this extra bullshit. Why didn't she just say that? You know what I'm saying? And, um, one of the viewers is saying that, you know, uh, Kim needs to start acting like a parent because, you know, your daughter came for Nene and Kenya on social media and everything. And Kim is saying, you know what, well, Brielle is grown or whatever. All right, Kim, remember that shit. So don't be sitting up here getting upset um, be, when motherfuckers come back, come back on her motherfucking ass because you said she grown, right? And like I said before, you, I mean, you grown, you going to sit up here and um try to get with the big dogs or whatever and talk that riffraff bullshit, uh, prepare, pre uh, prepare for the motherfucking war, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Remember, remember you said that shit, Kim, all right? So anyways, you know, um, so I don't want to hear no more about uh, people coming for your daughter and everything when she sit up here and um, be coming for people first or whatever. So anyways, you know... um. 
Portia tries to, you know, take up for Kim and says that, you know, well, she did say something to her or whatever. And Kenya is like, oh, bitch, why are you trying to help her out? You know what I'm saying? And Portia's like, I mean, I'm just saying. And it's like, yeah, I was kind of looking at Portia like, because Kim been wrong all this motherfucking season and the bullshit that she um was doing or whatever. But yeah, you sitting up here constantly uh taking up for her and everything. Child, so anyways, you know, um, Andy is asking Candy, what you think about the, um, jealous word being thrown around? And Candy is like, to be honest, I don't think, uh, nobody is jealous of Kim and what the fuck she got going on because everybody is doing great. So she's fucking irrelevant at this point. She came back on our show. Okay. <laughs> after being gone for five fucking years so anyways, then we get into the rise and fall of Nene and Kim's, uh, friendship. One of the viewers asks, um, Kim, why do you keep on saying that Nene is on drugs? Um, knowing that that could damage her reputation, just like the same situation with, you know, Portia and Candy or whatever. And, um, Kim is like, well, I said it to her face or whatever. I didn't go around saying it to other people. And, um, Nene is like, no, bitch, you went around and said something to Sheree before you even said something to me about it. You know what I'm saying? And then Kim want to sit up here and do a backpedal and pussy pop in my James Caldwell voice and say, uh, you know, well, it's not like I was saying that she was, um, doing a street drug or whatever. I just said that something was off. It's one thing it's one thing to say that you feel like somebody's energy is just off and you just feel like they're not really acting like they self. Then to sit up here and try to say, um, and con not even just once, but constantly say that the bitch is on drugs. Like, come on, like, come on, Kim. Come on with that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And um, but yeah, you want to sit up here and send um a gag order against Nene so she can't uh talk about you, whatever, this, that, and the third. But you've been saying all this shit about her um this season as well. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, you know, um, Nene is like, well, bitch, something is off with your motherfucking ass, okay? <laughs> and um, you know. Kim is like, you know, we can't even sit up here and have a conversation. And Nene is like, uh, you really think I'm going to sit up here and have a civilized conversation with your ass after you done sat up here and talked trash about me all season trying to, you know, uh, talk shit about my house or whatever and say all this other stuff about me? You think I'm about to be cool, calm, and collective with your ass? You got the um, wrong motherfucker here, okay? So anyways, you know, um, Candy says that she, you know, when she met with Kim, that she didn't feel like it was cool for Kim to say that either. And, you know, Kim is like, well, I didn't think it was cool for you to say I had a drinking problem. And Candy is like, hold the fuck up. I was repeating what you said about you always having to have somebody to drop you off so you can drink. You know what I'm saying? And they roll the tapes back and, yeah, Kim was saying, you know, some shit like that. And then Portia is like, well, Candy, you did add the word problem to the situation. In which Candy owns up to the fact that, yeah, I did say that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, the way you was talking, yeah, it sounded like you do got to drink a problem. If the first thing you got to do as um, soon as you wake up early in the morning... Um, wake up early in the morning is to make a motherfucking cocktail, bitch, you got a drink problem. Now, Candy ain't say all that shit, but I'm just throwing that in there, okay? And then you got this goddamn solo cup in your hand, and I'm pretty sure it's liquor in that shit. Okay? Like, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody else on that stage drinking, but you sit up here and bring uh your fucking red cup or whatever. Like, yeah. So anyways, you know, um... Cynthia is like, you know, Nene was acting like herself at her house. You know what I'm saying? And Kim is like, well, of course you're going to chime in or whatever. And it's like, yeah, um, just like how Sheree tries to chime in for your ass and just like how Portia been chiming in for your ass this whole time. So get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, Kim, okay? And Cynthia is like, child, please, I've been here longer than you at this point, okay? So you need to, so you need to um, cut the bullshit with that. You know, you want to sit up here. And um, talk shit, but then when somebody talks shit about your ass, it's a problem, you know. And one of the viewers was like, they find it very hard to believe that Candy tried to proposition Kim for some head. And Candy is like, yeah, I was pissed off or whatever because I thought me and Kim was going to be on a better page this season or whatever. And um, Kim is like, oh, I'm just the problem or, wh or whatever. And Candy is like, yeah, bitch, you are the problem, <laughs> you know. And Nene and uh, uh, um, what's the child name? Nene and um. Kenya, they agree. You know what I'm saying? And um, 
Candy, she then says to Sheree, and I was pissed off with you because you allowed her allowed her to say up here, um, sit up here and say that shit about me, and me and you supposed to be friends as well. You know what I'm saying? And then you didn't even tell me. You know what I mean? And um, Portia's like, that's because she only loyal to Kim. You know what I mean? And so then, um, pretty much Candy is like that Sheree said that, yeah, Kim, I mean, that Kim did say that. But then Kim want to sit up here and say that she didn't say that or whatever, this, that, and the third. And, you know, um... Andy is trying to tell Kim, bitch, you did say it. Like, do you uh, really have... I mean, I'm starting to wonder, bitch, do you really have a motherfucking drinking problem that you can't remember nothing that you say on this goddamn um show? Like, the tapes are not going to be ran back and showing what you're saying about people? Or are you just really delusional, okay? Like, fuck, like, even Andy had to remind her, girl, you did say that. And then she started trying to get snappy with Andy or whatever. And then, um, you know, Sheree is like, well, I had heard that before, so it, I didn't think it was a big deal. And Candy is like, you heard a what before? That I was trying to get with Kim, girl, if you don't get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Sheree starts getting tongue-tied or whatever, like she usually do. Um, Kim, ha you know, she brings up some trip that her and Candy took, like, years ago in the Bahamas or whatever. And Candy, she, uh, stopped her in her motherfucking track. She said, uh, girl, we went to the Bahamas. You was, um, dating DJ Tracy. And if I'm not mistaken, that was the, um, girl that Kim was dating, uh, back in the day, right, that had came on the show. But, yeah, you was dating DJ, uh, Tracy, um, and, uh, you was laid up with her in your room, um, with your kids in the living room. You know what I'm saying? And then um, Candy is like, and then another thing that pissed me off is how you want to sit up here and say you know a lot about Todd when we wasn't even cool when I got with him. And Kim is like, I mean, you the one who said that you uh brought a third party into you all's bedroom or whatever this, that, and the third. But it's like, Kim, you were saying that shit as if you done heard some shit out there in the streets. You wasn't saying that shit based off what Candy had said or whatever. And so Candy is like, uh... You've been watching us this whole time and looking like a fan and everything. And then you want to sit up here and come back on this show and come for me? Like, are you serious right now? And uh, Nene, she was like, so let me just clarify something. So uh, DJ Tracy was uh, licking your box while uh, the kids was in the living room. <laughs> I was like, Nene, if you don't shut your ass up. So anyways, um... One of the viewers is like, so uh, why was you cool with your daughter filming um, Nene's home or whatever? And if the tables was turned, um, turn, you know that you would be pissed off or whatever. And Cl Kim, she claims that, you know, um, Brielle um, posted the video or whatever. And then one of her friends hit her up saying that, you know, uh, it's a roach on your floor. I mean, on the floor or whatever. And then that's when Brielle took the video down and everything. And, you know, um, and she says that, you know, uh, she didn't save the video, but the video was in the text message. And, uh, I mean, sound like the same thing to me, but whatever, you know. And um, I was mad because Nene was trying to say I was faking illnesses and shit like that. And, you know, um, and like... <laughs> Like I said, y'all know I always been side-eyeing Kim when she sit up here and say that she got this going on and she got that going on, okay? So, you know, Nene, she says that, yes, I did take it, you know, I did take the roach thing as a metaphor for racism, you know what I'm saying? And Kim says that, you know, Nene is reaching or whatever, and, you know, um... Candy is like, you know, people do equate it to the projects or whatever and, you know, people being dirty and everything. And when you have somebody that's black that reaches a level of success and then you have somebody saying something like that, it does come off that way. You know what I mean? And so then, um, people, you know, Andy, he says that people were upset with you, Sheree, because you knew about the video. You know what I'm saying? Um, when y'all were at dinner or whatever. Kim <sighs> lying a fucking gin. Sitting up here saying that she didn't show Sheree uh, the video at dinner. She's like, if that's the case, I would have showed the whole world or whatever. And they rolled back the tapes. And we all know that she did show Sheree that video at when they were at dinner. And then Sheree trying to sit up here and try to act like uh, she can't, like she got amnesia all of a sudden. That she can't remember whether Kim showed her the video at dinner or not. 
child. So Portia, she's like, you know, uh, that's not, no, I'm sorry. Sheree, she says that she didn't think the video would go anywhere. And that's when Portia is like, that's not the point. You claim that you're the bone collector or whatever. You knew about this fucking video, but then you want to sit up here and smile and laugh in Nene's face or whatever like y'all was cool like that. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, Kim, she wants to leave or whatever. Boo, hoo, hoo, whatever. And Nene is like, let her privileged ass go. Get your ass on and don't come back. The door is closed. Okay? And so, Andy had asked one more question um i think whether kim and nini was going to be cool again and nini was like hell to the naw ain't no being cool again the door is closed okay and so then kim she gets up to leave and um andy had asked everybody what they learned from that season and that was pretty much you know a wrap you know the wrap up of um the reunion but um so everybody, you know, proceeds backstage so they could change into their clothes, their comfortable clothes so they can leave. And, you know, Kim is backstage and one of the producers tells Andy that she wants to talk to him or whatever. And they tell to bring a camera back there so, you know, we can see what's going on. And so Kim says that um, there was a one positive question for her and everything. Everything was just so negative or whatever because you're a negative bitch. And like Kenya says, it's like a dark cloud and just this bad aura whenever you come around. You know what I'm saying? And she says Nene knows that she's nowhere near races and everything. And, you know, you know why you haven't found another white woman to, you know, sit on your couch is because nobody wants to deal with that. I'm sorry. Come again. Deal with what? Deal with what? You're just mad because they checked your ass because you were sitting up here talking all this cash money shit all season. And then when they confront you about it, you kept on backpedaling and pussy popping or trying to make just justifications of what the fuck you was doing and saying. You like you just could you like and, and and this takes me back to um when Candy had very first got her house and Kim was still on the show. And Kim was saying all this different shit. And Sweetie was saying all this different shit about Candy's house or whatever. And it's just like, you, why couldn't you just be happy for her? Because your ass was mad because around that time, you was getting kicked out your motherfucking home. We want to sit up here and throw shade at Candy. Now, Candy's house, now that Candy, you know, uh, uh, Fix it up and everything. That's a beautiful ass house that Candy has. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, you know, Sheree comes back to where Kim is at. And Kim says that, you know, she's upset with her. And she feels like Sheree didn't stick up for her. That's because Sheree is for herself at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, we, we sit up here and say that, you know, uh, Sheree is a slave to Kim and everything. And this, that, and the third. Which I do feel like that. But at the same time. Sheree is all out for herself at the end of the day. She's going to do whatever she can to stay on this motherfucking show and, um, you know, and to secure her peach and everything. She's going to do any and everything that she can. So at the end of the day, she really is out all for her motherfucking self. You know what I'm saying? And Sheree is like, well, I did try to stop Kenya or whatever from saying what she was saying about your kid and everything. And, you know, I'm not sitting up here fighting nobody's battle. I did say something earlier before you came out. But, you know, NeNe has everybody around here around her. I'm like, oh, here we go trying to blame this shit on NeNe for why everybody is getting in Kim's motherfucking ass. No, everybody's getting in Kim's motherfucking ass because she always running her mouth. And they want to sit up here and play victim when people come for her ass. Like, everybody's just doing the poor white girl so uh, so wrong. If you don't get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. So, then Kim, and I saw this clip on the Shade Room yesterday. Before I watched, you know, the episode. Kim sits up here and says that racism in um, this day and age is bullshit. And how they owe this whole world. I mean... Yeah, yeah, and how they owe this whole world an apology. I'm like, well, bitch, you gonna be apologizing after everybody digging your motherfucking ass about what you said in regards to racism and how it's bullshit in this day and age. Like, and somebody, and I know it's gonna be somebody. Um, and, and it probably has been some people out there who then already said, oh well, uh, she didn't mean it like that. No, she meant exactly what the fuck she said. Okay, and um. She's like, you know, and they tried to say I was racist long ago before social media was around. And if it wasn't around, uh, it wouldn't be all that real or whatever. Or some shit like that she said. Pretty much saying that if it wasn't for social media, um, 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 racism wouldn't be um, 
um, a big deal or a big thing. Bitch, are you stupid? So when Harriet Tubman took herself and all the um, slaves to, um, you know, help them um, find freedom... It wasn't a big deal back then. And this was way before we even ever thought about a goddamn social media. And way before we thought technology was going to be where it is now. You mean to tell me the shit that Malcolm X and Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. fought for wasn't a big deal back then? Because social media wasn't around. <laughs> Kim, if you don't go the fuck on with that bullshit. I don't need to see Kim anymore. And I heard that she said that she wasn't coming back. And um, you could tell Andy is just over her at this point. Because I remember seeing um in the blogs that he even said that, yeah, I think she's done. I'm tired of seeing her um around these reunions. Or some, something along them lines that he had said about her. So Andy is even tired of your motherfucking ass. And when Kim said that shit, Croy even looked at her like, bitch, what the fuck is you now? You going a little bit too far with this bullshit now. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's just like all this shit that's going on now with police brutality and Black Lives Matter, the situation that just happened at Starbucks last week in Philadelphia, but you want to sit up here and say that uh, uh, racism um, is um, bullshit in today's time. Kim, if you don't take your privileged ass to motherfucker bum a fuck hillbilly Timbuktu back on Tardy for the motherfucking Party Avenue with that bullshit. Oh my God, y'all. She pissed me the hell off when she said that shit. I didn't think it could get any worse. I really couldn't have. You sat up here. You said shit about Nene being on drugs all season and talked about uh, the roaches being in her house and all this other bullshit you were saying about her. You sat up here and tried to say that Candy offered you head or whatever, sitting up here lying on her and everything. You sit up here and you come at Ken Kenya at Nene's party for no reason, but then get mad when she throw that fire back at your motherfucking ass. And I also saw where um Marlon Wayans had, you know, joked on her or whatever about, you know, we ain't making a white chicks too, y'all, whatever he had said. And y'all remember how Kim got upset, whatever, whatever. And, um... I'm a car back. Sorry, y'all. I got distracted with my phone. Shit, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the whole Marlon Wayne situation. And TMZ caught up with her ass or whatever and was saying, you know, she just thinks that it's disgusting, you know, um, in this um, time period with women and everything and, you know, the whole Me Too movement. I said, oh, I know we not going here with this bullshit, Kim. I know we not going here with this. You really sitting up here equating a comedian making jokes, joking on your ass? To people um, being sexually abused and raped. Are you fucking kidding me, Kim? If you don't go somewhere with that bullshit right now. Oh, and then I forgot to mention. You sit up here and try to downplay um, Cynthia's accomplishments. Because, uh, because of the fact that she's beautiful. Yes, she is a beautiful woman. She's a very beautiful woman. And yeah, she used her looks to... um. Get to where she, yeah, she used her looks to be a fucking model. Unlike you, where you had to lay on your motherfucking back to get half of the shit that you fucking got. You on this show or whatever because Croy's ass ain't doing nothing but um being your motherfucking chauffeur. And you ain't doing a goddamn thing but tired ass tardy for the party. So yeah, I don't need to see no more of motherfucking Kim's ass and she could take nigga Whitfield on with her. And I heard her ass got fired anyways and I hope it's true because I'm sick of the both of them. Um, Y'all, that was um the season. It's a wrap on season 10. Um, Yeah, don't bring uh Sheree's, Sheree's ass back because I don't need to see her back. And Kim asked, but then I come back either. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys come back. Um, 
Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Before I go, Andy had asked. He's like, you know, well, what, what would you have liked to me um, to have done? You know what I'm saying? And Kim was like, I just wanted more positive questions or whatever. And Andy is like, well, bitch, it wasn't nothing positive from your ass this season. Sorry to tell you. And that was um the reunion, y'all. It's a wrap on season 10 make sure y'all like comment and subscribe make sure you guys come back i'm sorry this video is so long um but i hope you guys uh watch all the way through um but i'll see y'all in the next video all right y'all